Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I feel like God wants to address the needs of widows. Many of you widows have children. And there are times when children tend to go off and do their own thing. You know, the old expression, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. Yeah, well, that's not exactly what the word is saying. So for those of you, I don't have kids, so I'm, I'm not in this. But the, for those of you who have mothers who are widows or fathers who are widowers, Think twice before you go off and do your own thing, and, and the Word will tell you why. Listen, God's Word, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 3 to 18. And I'm going to say this before I read. The word requite means to reciprocate, to give in return. All right, that way you know what it means. <clears throat> Starting at verse 3. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed, and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth and these things give in charge that they may be blameless but if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. <clears throat> dead be dead. Oh, anyway. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old, having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work. But the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them. Let not the church be charged that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. I read a little further. That's up to 21. Didn't mean to, but anyway. Listen. What I'm saying to that is 
there are times when I didn't expect to do this. I just got through reading a bunch of scripture and I did it on video. And I asked the Lord what to talk about and this scripture came to my mind. So a lot of times what I want to say, especially in family dynamics, folks like me who get old, like I have, can sometimes be cantankerous, hard to deal with, uh, angry, bitter, hurting, and God hasn't been able to get in there and heal because that person has, an, has not invited him in to do so. So, in essence, when you deal with some widows and some widowers, they are what you called damaged goods. And we have to pray and ask God for compassion, understanding, and patience. Because people like that tend to hurt others. Hurting people hurt people. Sad but true. But God can open your eyes to their needs. God can show you the love they really need. What kind of love means something to them. And God can show you how to draw them close to you and to God so that they can finally accept him and receive his healing touch. Life is so much more rewarding without all that baggage haunting you and pulling you down all the time. When you look after your widows and widowers, think about their needs. When you're going to different church events, Think about taking them with you. Invite them. Yeah, you may have to put up with some sour notes. But it, you're not being sentenced to life. This is a moment. This is something you can sacrifice for the sake of love. Once they become convinced that you really care, I bet you see a lot of that bitterness start to soften. You watch. Love softens hardness. Love is, is, is medicine. It's the best medicine there is, you guys. Be tender to those that are hard with you. To the best of your ability. Ask God to show you how. And look and see if they have any needs. Ask them. Look around. You may... If they ask, the, if you ask them, do you need this or you need that? They're, nine times out of ten, they're going to believe with their broken spirits that you really don't want to be bothered and that you're really hoping they say no. So they give you what they think you want to hear. Don't ask. Look and see what you think they need. Ask God how you can be a blessing to them. Bless them without asking them. Just do it. Simple as that. Just do it. Call them up. I'm coming over. Okay. You come over. You say, come on, let me help you get dressed. I'm going to take you out for dinner. Even if they, I don't feel like, come on, I'm going to take you out. If they know you really want to do it, they'll probably comply. But if they really, really don't want to do it, then say, okay, what would you like me to bring to eat. I'm gonna uh we're gonna eat dinner tonight. What do you want me to bring? And see what they say. I showing that you really want to do something is half the battle. If somebody needs a gardener, the yard looks like crap. I'm just trying to come up with ideas. The yard looks like crap. But they're on a very fixed income and they can't afford a gardener. You take some of your little lunch money that you spend at Starbucks, save your little ducats up, give a gardener a call and say, I want you to come and do blah, blah, blah. Make this yard look presentable and pay for it. And don't tell them how much you paid for it. Just get it done.
Think outside of you. Think beyond the Gucci's. Think beyond the the vacations, the trips, the stays at the expensive five-star hotels. Bring that notch down and stay at a four or three-star hotel. And that money you save, bless a widow or widower with it. Get something fixed that needs fixed in the house. Pay for it. Bring down your fanciness, your your uh, luxuries. Bring them down a notch. You'd be surprised at how much you could bless somebody who can't even afford a fancy roll of toilet paper. What a difference that'll make in their lives when you can do what you want to do at will, but they can't. God will bless you big time. You think you're blessed now. Yeah, yeah. You start giving up a few dainties, a few delicacies, and a few comforts for someone else's needs. And you'd be shocked how God will bless you, baby. Oh, yeah. That's what you call love. Indeed.